Now let's talk about some of these hold ins and hold outs. You got Hassan Reddick, who was traded to the New York Jets from the Philadelphia Eagles this year. He is holding out. He has not arrived at camp. He wants a new contract. We've got C.D. Lamb, who is probably a top three uh, wide receiver in the game. He is holding out. He is not at camp as well. He's looking for that big, massive contract. And then you got the biggest news of the week, Jordan Love. I've watched Jordan Love, the head, I mean, the, the star quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, is holding in. Uh, all reports are saying from Green Bay media, from that media, that they're expecting. They've been saying the last three days that this deal is going to happen any day now. Uh, he does have the best agent in, in football, David Mulgetta. You know, he's the one who's going to get all the great deals for his clients. Um, I think it's just a matter of time. I don't think this is such a big deal. Uh, as far as the situation, he is going to get a massive contract. As we know, each deal just keeps setting up for the other. He's probably going to be the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. Um, my thing is this. Out of all these, the one that, that, that is the most dangerous to me seems like C.D. Lamb. This is something where Jerry Jones is – he's in peak C now right now. He's got a situation more and more with him, and it feels like that press guy is like, I'm going to – I'm going to chuck you niggas to do this, 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 this upcoming spring. I'm up out of this joint. You got Michael Parsons contract extensions coming up in a little bit. The CD is at worst a top three wide receiver in football. He 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 uh definitely deserves that contract. I don't know what the holdup is from getting that. And it feels like he's hell bent on not reporting to camp until he actually gets that um contracts so i think that's the one that stands out more than anything is something that is a big deal here i think Hassan ready is going to be worked out I, I would be shocked if this goes into the actual season uh my only question with the jordan love thing is why hasn't it happened they've been saying all week this is a matter of time what's the hold up what's the language just to hold up on that i think this conversation in general we'll get to two in a little bit is now you're seeing quarterbacks and by the way jordan love had a great year last year uh he started off you know, had a little patch he wasn't that good he had a great Finished to the season, got us into the playoffs, uh, won a playoff game. He had a good year. He would have had the best statistical season in Chicago Bears history. So I'm not trying to dump on him on a non-biased media perspective. I just kind of feel like they're going to be paying him for what they hope they do, which they they backed themselves into a corner when they got rid of Aaron Rodgers. They gave the keys to them, so they're living and die with him. So I'm not mad at paying them. But you're going to start seeing this trend where a lot of these quarterbacks, there's not a lot of elite, elite guys. They're going to be paid for – one, we just can't find a better option for you and things we hope you're going to do uh, in the future. Uh, Mikey, what, what what does any of these uh, hold-ins, hold-outs stand to you? And, and what do you think about the, the Jordan Love uh, contract thing? The one that really stands out to me is uh, CD, like you said, man. Um, it's, really, it's really tough. It's a really tough position. I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. Not a Cowboys fan, but it's a really tough position to be in if you're the Dallas Cowboys right now because you have your three cornerstone players that all need money. And it's kind of similar to what we were talking about in um, with San Francisco. San Francisco is just fortunate enough that Brock doesn't need a deal right now. If Brock, if this was 2024 and Brock needed a deal with all of those guys, it might have been over with. Um, so CD is the one to me that is really tough because I agree. I have him as a top five wide receiver. I have him top three. I have him over um, Jamar Chase. I know a lot of people don't, but I do. I really do like CeeDee Lamb's game. But what are your key positions? Quarterback, left tackle, and somebody that can put the quarterback on his ass. They got that in Michael Parsons. They need to pay him. They have to make a decision on Dak Prescott. And I don't know if you can afford to pay CeeDee Lamb while he's still under contract and not know what your long-term future is at quarterback. Um, it's a really tough position to be in. I want to see if he ends his holdout reports and they try to come back to him next year. If it was me personally, I think CD lamb is somebody that if the, if Jerry Jones loves Dak the way he says he does, and he loves Michael Parsons the way he says he does, then I think CD lamb is, is expendable. Because we're seeing more and more now every year wide receivers get drafted, come in, rookie deals, and they put up 1,000 yards easy, and they put up 1,200 yards easy, and they fucking take off, and you can find them a dime a dozen how people used to find running backs. So out of all of the players on the Dallas Cowboys have, CeeDee Lamb is the most expendable. So I'm interested to see how long this lasts. I don't know if they rework his deal but not give him a long-term contract. 
I, I just I don't know. Um, and it has ramifications everywhere else because next year Jamar Chase needs a, a contract and he's definitely going to be looking at CeeDee Lamb's deal. Um, as far as Jordan Love, though, I mean – they played they played a really tough game with him by drafting him in the first round but not taking advantage of that fifth year option um i know they reworked that deal last year to kind of give him some money whatever but now it's 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 time to pay the piper and he balled out man you know his his last half of the season is a total 180 compared to what he was the first you know six games of the season um obviously i think the hold up with him was just waiting to see what tua got um I think they're probably going to come in maybe a little a little under Tua or right over Tua. I don't know if y'all noticed, but uh, Tua only got $1 million more than Jared Goff. So I don't know if Jordan Love just says, I just need one extra million dollar more right. than Tua, so I could be up there. Um, but he deserves it. It's, it's a quarterback-driven lead. He played well. I trust him with Matt LaFleur uh together as a package if matt lafleur wasn't there then i don't know if i would trust jordan love at a as a 275 million dollar quarterback but he's going to get his deal we saw last year there were about i think i counted nine teams that had to go from quarterback one all the way down to quarterback three and in the vikings case they went to qb4 there's a huge drop off if you got a guy you just got to keep the guy you got to pay the guy and that's where it comes down to just roster you know construction and and guys that know how to work the cap so um, he's going to get paid and, you know, hopefully for them, it doesn't work out. <laughs> right. Exactly. Hopefully it don't fuck them. Uh, Dante, go ahead. Wait, what you, what, which one of these hold in hold out stand out to you? Uh, I would have to go with CD just because everybody else that needs to be paid on that Cowboys roster. And it's looking more and more like Jerry's going to have to make a choice. Like, is he going to just say fucking and pay everybody? I highly doubt that. So now it's a matter of seeing who stays on that team and who gets to walk. Because, I mean, as a team who's looking for a defensive end, you know, um, that's something that can interest us. Uh, you know, I think that's a guy with everybody else. Um, well, same with Hassan Reddick, really. You know, that's another guy who might be cheaper than a Michael Parsons. So, you know, just seeing monitoring that situation. Um, as far as Jordan Love, that deal is just a matter of time. He'll definitely get his deal. But those two defensive ends, I think that's definitely something to look at because, I mean, that market is so fluid. And you see guys who get pretty petty and like, nah, bro, I don't care if I signed last year. I'm about to hold out. So those are the two. Like I said, I do think uh, CD more than anything is important because that's going to determine a lot about what the Cowboys do. If you pay CD, you know, like you, like Mikey said, he's under contract, but if you pay, if you choose to pay him and then now it's down to Dak and Micah, that, that, that can get interesting. So, uh, out of those, out of those we named, I think CD is probably the one that we should keep the closest eye on. Bang man. Take us home on this one. I am going to be so very happy when the Green Bay Packers have to give up all of their money to pay Jordan Love. Reason why is simple. I understand that he had him a very decent year at the back half of the year. But I'm also I'm always nervous about paying a quarterback so much money with so small of a sample size. And that's what's going to happen with this team right here. You have to pay him. You can't not pay him. I'm not saying that they should not pay him. You have to. But when you have a Detroit Lions team, as much as I can hate them and rant on them about what happened with this Hulk Hogan shit, this team is the best team in the division. You have a Bears team who's looking very good with finally a quarterback, and they're upcoming. And then, I mean, as much as I say that J.J. McCarthy is going to be the head coach of Nazareth football here in LaGrange Park, Illinois, um, in about seven <laughs> to eight years, they still got a hell of a defense. Now Green Bay is going to be going up against a harder schedule, and now he's going to have to prove it from day one. So if they do pay him that money and he is not successful, you're stuck. You're basically stuck with – you're paying him like you want to pay Aaron Rodgers or how you want to pay Brett Favre. But is he Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre or is he Don Mikowski? That's what we're going to find out this year. And I just don't know if I would have do it this year. I probably would take the chance and be like, all right, man, we'll give you a little bit more money and then you know, we'll see what happens at the end of the year. And he's going to be like, nah, so you got to pay him because now he's not there. And I'm just worried that he's not going to be what you think he is once you could really fully game plan against this man for a full year. 
But as a Bears fan, I'm happy about it. Go ahead and pay that freight to a quarterback that might not be good. Please pay him. Please, please, please do. Please get on one knee after a couple dates and say this is my life partner, and you find out this bitch like eating in the bed. Please do that. Please, one hundred percent, do that. <laughs> but uh, let's move on to the. Then paper on his player haters old news money on the other line, so I'm not gonna hold you. Money on the other line, so I'm not gonna.